It is late Wednesday, October 10th, 2012, and as we take a look into the tropics, we're still dealing with Invest 97L, which is an area of low pressure just to the east of the Bahamas. That system has a 20% chance of developing, but the system that really does have a true chance of becoming a named system is Invest 98L, and the Hurricane Center is now giving this feature a 40% chance of development within the next 48 hours, and this is a little bit bigger of an issue because it will be moving toward the Northeast Caribbean. The latest surface plot analyzed by the Tropical Analysis Forecast Branch shows that we have a tropical wave just to the east of Barbados, and along the tail end of this tropical wave we have a 1,008 millibar surface low, and this surface low is expected to become better organized over the next 48 to 72 hours. The 850 millibar vorticity analysis shows the area of low pressure just to the east of the Bahamas, but more importantly this is also 98L invest. The current low level of vorticity signature is elongated from southwest to northeast due to some southwest vertical wind shear, but this wind shear is beginning to lessen. As a result of the upper level low starting to move a little bit more toward the west, toward Hispaniola, we're starting to see more in the way of upper level ridging out across the central Atlantic, and that is why we're starting to see a little bit more of a more favorable outflow pattern, especially along the northern semicircle, and where we saw that surface low analyzed by the tropical analysis forecast branch. You can even start to make out a bit of a low to mid-level spin starting to develop here. And this is the beginning of what is more than likely going to be gradual development into potentially our next tropical depression or tropical storm of the season. The water vapor shows the picture even better because the upper level low that we're talking about was more toward the east at this time yesterday. And it's now well to the west. We've got more in the way of anticyclonic flow aloft. And conditions should be marginally favorable for slow intensification. Also, as we quickly transition back to the enhanced infrared, you can also make out Invest 97L situated to the southwest of Bermuda. And 97L actually does not look all that bad this evening, but I think the reason why the Hurricane Center is being so pessimistic in their wording is because this low is likely going to be sheared apart within the next 12 to 24 hours, so it would be somewhat pointless if they decided to go ahead and upgrade the system to a tropical depression and then have to quickly downgrade it later within a 24-hour period. On this graphic, you can see the southwest wind shear is quickly approaching our system in the western Atlantic, and this shear is in association with the mid to upper level trough, so that is why we're not expecting that low to linger around the Atlantic for much longer. But down toward the south, we see the upper level divergent flow beginning to set up to the east of Barbados and the Lesser Antilles, and as a result, we're starting to see those wind shear values start to lessen near 10 degrees north latitude, and this area of more relaxed wind shear should begin to lift more toward the north and west with time. Also, the 26 degrees Celsius isotherm for water temperatures is well to the north, almost to 35 degrees north or 40 degrees north latitude, so water temperatures are still certainly very favorable for tropical cyclogenesis, despite the fact that we're moving into the mid to latter half of October. This is the latest GFS sea level pressure and precipitation forecast for Friday afternoon. And this is the general timetable for this area of low pressure to begin working its way into the Lesser Antilles. And we can see this even more as we advance through the remainder of the forecast period. Although the low is going to be coming in from a rather low latitude, this is going to be primarily a system that's going to heavily impact the Leeward Islands because any southwest vertical wind shear is going to make the convection be displaced at least somewhat to the north of any center of circulation. And also it looks as though the low itself will start to gain a little bit more in the way of latitude over the next 72 hours. So the main concentration of the strongest winds and precip are likely going to go north of the Windward Islands and more so toward the Leewards and Virgin Islands. As we work our way into Saturday and Sunday, the low is going to start lifting toward the north of the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico. And as we go deeper into the extended range, this may also be a system for interest in Bermuda to also keep an eye on because a trough is going to swing through the eastern United States and help this area of low pressure take a turn more so toward the north. So this is no threat toward the United States or the Bahamas. Also, just to emphasize the point that we made a minute ago, the southwest vertical wind shear that will remain at least somewhat is going to allow the bulk share of convection to remain north and northeast of the center of the low at the surface and therefore the precipitation is also going to remain north of the Windward Islands and based on this precipitation forecast the bulk of the precip is even going to remain north of the Leeward Islands. Just keep in mind though that any change in the organization or track of the low pressure could allow this precip forecast to change quite a bit so we're still going to be keeping a very close eye on this for you here at 28storms.com as the models continue to update every 6 to 12 hours. 
Also, one other thing I would like to quickly point out is the Saturday morning forecast from the ECMWF. And much like the GFS, the European model is alluding to the possibility of a tropical depression or tropical storm moving over the Virgin Islands in Puerto Rico. And even if the bulk of convection is north of the center, you could still be seeing occasionally heavy rainfall along with winds exceeding 30 to 40 miles per hour, depending on just how quickly this area of low pressure begins to get its act together. So although this is not looking like an overly significant impact, this is still probably a weather event that you're going to want to keep tabs on over the next 72 to 96 hours. So stick with 28storms.com and the Hurricane Tracker app for more updates on this developing area of low pressure in the central Atlantic. And if you have any interest in severe weather out across the plains of the United States, you may also want to stay tuned because we do have a potential severe weather episode on the horizon. We're likely going to see some severe weather beginning Thursday, but the bigger days are going to be Friday and especially Saturday, and we're going to have continuing coverage as both of these events continue to evolve. So stay tuned, and we will provide you with more updates on our website along with our Facebook and Twitter accounts.